know, I found it uh, fascinating. I was listening to uh, the Ohio State News Conference starting with Ryan Day the other day, and then it was uh, Al Washington was at the podium because we did get some comments about uh, the linebacker play, which has been of course, much maligned for the last few seasons and uh, took up much of our discussion during the off season. Uh, Pete Werner seems to be a much more explosive player, a much uh, a player that's uh, gained a lot of confidence and a lot of uh, trust in the system and been uh, able to make some plays. Uh, Tough Borland's been criticized here in the live chat uh, as maybe not being up to up to speed, pardon the pun, uh, of the, the rest of the linebacking core. Uh, you, you guys, uh, your thoughts about uh, Borland in particular and the rest of the, the core there? Well, since people aren't complaining about Damon Arnett at the moment, somebody's somebody's <laughs> got to be the guy, and apparently it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Tough Borland. Um, yeah, uh, we can go back to his interception in his convoy, and he kind of got run down by by a lineman, which wasn't necessarily the uh, the the best situation. But I still think he's playing pretty well. Um, you know, I think that a, a lot. Once again, credit goes to the defensive staff. I mean, now Washington and everybody. I've got cats fighting over out by me, so that's uh, that's what you're hearing in the background. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've gone back and I've watched the games and I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of the same problems that I saw last year. Um, you know, I think everybody really is excited with, you know, what might be behind curtain number two and they want to see somebody else, but you're always running a risk at that point. Uh, you know, you've got somebody who's been in the system for a couple of years who has a lot of, uh, a lot of starts under his belt. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not disappointed in Borland right now. Miami of Ohio coming up this weekend. Is there any reason to make any discussion points on what I think I saw as a fifty-point spread? I thought it was. I thought it was forty. It opened 40? up. It opened up like thirty-seven. I think it's up to forty. But I haven't. I haven't looked in the last couple hours, so I'm not sure where the betters have it at. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not going to be close. I mean, you know, if you believe what the odds makers are saying right now, and uh, yeah, uh, I think everybody should be able to enjoy that Michigan Wisconsin game first, and be able to co coast right into the Ohio State game, and then be on to uh, UGA Notre Dame uh, later that evening. The school that uh, produced Woody Hayes, of course, the cradle, Among many others, the cradle of coaches. Claire, thank you so much. Jack Park would be proud of you. Of no, course, he, he would. would. Who came? Who came closest are. last week? Do we know? Do we know what the scores who won last week? I yeah. wasn't on last week. Uh yeah, I'm gonna have to boy, I'm if I don't start keeping track week to week, I'm gonna have a whole lot of work. Uh, I'll assume it was the me season. then. I think it I think it might have been me. I don't I remember what it, my score was, but my score was too close. You were in like the forty one thirteen range or something like mm -hmm. that. So yes. your, yours was, gonna, was yeah, better. I sent mine in via mess, messenger, but I was Yeah, like, we were a little oh, closer, Kevin. We were anticipating the Hoosiers putting up a fight. I said something like 38-20, something in that range. So yeah, I, you guys I are way off. Took honors. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what is Tony throwing out there? I said you guys were way off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long season, Tony. It's a long season. <laughs> it goes quickly, though. It does. It's the shortest season in sports. All right. It's not necessarily, yes, the NBA. All right, Kevin, we will let you uh, take a shot at this week's score first. Well, I'm not – I probably predicted too close of a score last week, and I'm probably going to predict too wide of a spread this week. But uh, we're having an interesting discussion while we're waiting for interviews today about – what would happen if Ohio State didn't watch one frame of film? They didn't, you know, they didn't study Miami of it all at all. They just did wow. class work, or they prepared for Nebraska, or they all played two K or something like that. <laughs> what would happen? And we all still felt that they'd probably win by forty. Well, they have practiced. I drove by the Woody today. I saw them out there on the outdoor fields. Uh, you know, they still may be playing two K, but. Uh, I, I just think that it's going to be a matter of how long the starters stay in and what Ryan Day thinks about Chuck Martin. Uh, you know when they're going to when they're going to take the foot off the accelerator. This game has a fifty-nine to ten feel. Uh, Ohio State covers. Luke Fickle used to said it was not Chuck Martin's job; it was Chuck Martin's job to stop Ohio State, not his. Right? Exactly. 
What do you say, Claire? I say Ohio State's going to cover. I say it's going to be 55 to 3, which I still think is somewhat conservative. Conservative? Yeah. Okay. Well, here's my thing. Ohio State's backup quarterbacks aren't as good as they've been in the past. So it's hard to count on a fourth quarter score from this offense right now. Whereas before you had Dwayne Haskins would come in and throw the ball around or even Tate Martell would come in and run around or Joe Burrow would come in for a drive and move the ball. And right now they're not getting that. So you almost have to predict what is the score going to be after three quarters and then (laughs) will the Buckeyes give up a score with their second and third team in the fourth quarter. And that's why I, I'm feeling like 59 nothing, but then, and I don't know if there's going to be any fourth quarter scoring. So I will go 52 nothing because I think, uh, I think the, the young defense playing in the fourth quarter has gained some confidence and is getting better by the day. So I am calling for the shutout. Go ahead and book that one. <laughs> 52 nothing. And that's probably with another missed field goal. Uh, Al Lagan told me he's pay- taking Miami, so I'd put him down for that. <laughs> Miami. 28 21. Got it. <laughs> all right. Well, if there's a frame of reference in all of this, I don't think there's much, but uh, the two teams did play Cincinnati. So Miami's coming off a trip to Cincinnati against the Bearcats. They lost 35 13. Prior to that, they, of course, played Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech. They won that one 48-17, and they opened at Iowa, losing 38-14, a game I remember very well, and Iowa scoring late to get a bit of a cover there that was about 21 and a half. So I will save my prediction, of course, for my link down in the description section below, (laughs) and it will be, of course, available to these three. And I got a counter, 55-3, 59-10, and 52-zip. Goodness. So go like 34-17. The poor guy in the Brutus outfit is going to be exhausted doing football. <laughs> yeah. Or girl. Or girl. <laughs> yes, I might have to go with a counter prediction using Tony's philosophy here. Everybody's swaying on one side. It may be more, more respectable than that. You might want to wait until next week for that, though. 